there's a, my mind kind of goes back, there's a place down in Florida we like to visit, big old mouse and uh, Disney, Disney, not certain restaurants, and uh, that's a dad joke, sorry about that, um, but I was told uh, that there is at Disney, I've, I've been there many times, and in the evening, there is a zip line, a line that goes from the top of Cinderella's castle down to another area. And every night, there is a little lady who's Tinkerbell, and she gets on that zip line, and many of you have probably seen that. And I noticed one year, that particularly, that the Tinkerbell didn't go down the line. And so I began to ask somebody that was, you know, had been there many times and had even taken the tours to see the inner workings of it. And they said that Tinkerbell has to weigh 107 pounds on the nose. Can't weigh 107.5, cannot weigh 108, can't weigh 106. Because as Tinkerbell is coming down the line, if she's too, let me rephrase that, if she's a little over the limit she'll go too fast and if she is under the limit then she may get stuck going down she has to be the right weight now obviously I couldn't begin to do that but some of you have walked into this building today with too much weight on your shoulders you've walked in here and Maybe you've gotten stuck, or maybe you have just gone too fast. Maybe life has treated you unfairly, which is life. But can we put the holidays out for just a little bit today? I'm an evangelist. I've done it many years. I used to pastor. And I know that at Thanksgiving time, you just kind of go into coast mode. That's what they tell us. Just don't try too hard. Just go into coast mode and just get through the holidays. Well, I've come with a burden on my spirit today. I've come with a burden in my heart today for everybody in this place. I, I don't know what you walked in here with, but can we just put all of the Thanksgiving turkey and everything out of our minds and uh, Black Friday sales and Christmas holiday that's coming up. We're, we're right in the season, but can we put that away for the next little bit and just really fall in love with Jesus all over again? Hallelujah. Amen. It is my honor to be here with uh, Pastor and Sister Chance. We love you. It is always my honor to be here. I apologize. My wife is not with me again today. Um, she did uh, stay with her mom. Her father passed away a year ago, uh, or two years ago, and uh, this is just a tough time for them. And I said, you stay right there, and I'll go to Monroe by myself. And Toby and Bethany, good to see you. Love you all. Book of Exodus, chapter number 1, verse number 10. And uh, again, I, I do count it a privilege and an honor uh, to be with you all today. See smiling faces. Sister Chance, amen. God bless you. Smile and, and welcome me when I got out of the car. Amen. Thank you so much. What a great history you have here at Monroe, Louisiana. Exodus chapter 1, verse number 10. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. So get them up out of the land. Exodus chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Amen. God heard their groanings. God heard the cry of the children of Israel. God remembered his covenant. Would you put your Bibles down? Let's lift our hands to heaven and let's pray together. God, we thank you for this time. Touch us, touch our minds, touch our hearts, Lord. Touch us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Touch my mind, God, of everything I've thought that's not pleasing. My eyes of everything I've seen that is not good for you or uh, pleasing to you, Lord. Touch my tongue, my lips, God. 
things I've said that's not been right, God. Touch my body, the places I've gone that's not pleasing to you. Touch me, God. I want to be a holy oracle. I want to be a conduit that you can flow through today. Touch us now in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I want to preach to you for an hour or two on the subject. I figured I'd get your attention with that. Uh, on just a few minutes, the, the king always has another move. The king always has another move. Amen. I uh, just really quickly, let me kind of get, uh, get this out of here, out, out of the way. Uh, Pastor mentioned a few moments ago in September, I was in Honduras and Nicaragua. And uh, Nicaragua, we had 45 people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then I taught the Bible college uh, instructors in Nicaragua and Honduras. And then uh, flew back into Miami just right when that hurricane was passing through. Drove to Orlando, was at General Conference. Came home, flew to um, uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, then I flew back. I was at home two weeks and flew to the Philippines by way of Hong Kong. Flew back, landed in Los Angeles. Are y'all tired yet? <laughs> I'm exhausted. Amen. Flew back from Los Angeles to Houston at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning. Just stayed at the airport when I got there. Checked my luggage back in. Flew to Mexico. Th saw 371 people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> flew home from Mexico. Stayed at the airport. Checked my luggage back in. Flew to uh, Indiana for Thanksgiving. And this turkey's tired. Amen. Hallelujah. But I am thankful to be part of the kingdom of God and what God is doing I, uh, I prayed for many years, God, I want to be on the middle or right in the middle of end time revival. And guess what? He stuck me right smack dab in the middle of it. Amen. Now I'm praying, Lord, come quickly. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so good to see smiling faces. But uh, I, I played, uh, my dad, I, I, I was telling Pastor earlier, uh, I was raised a very, very uh, strict home. And I'm very grateful for that because it's put some inner braces inside of me. But one of those things that I really didn't understand when I was younger is I couldn't play high school sports. I like basketball. I, I'm, I'm a basketball player. I still, even at my size and age, give me a few minutes and knee, knee brace and uh, been gay and all types of medicine. I'll get out and play ball myself now. Amen. Uh, but I, I just, uh, I, I didn't play organized sports, if you will. But he would let me play on the chess team. Never understood that one, but uh, I, get to, I got to play chess. I don't like chess. Cannot stand chess. I won every match, every match that I went to, and I went to all of them. I won every tournament uh, because most teams had only four people. Ours had five, and I was number five, so I won all of my matches. So I'm undefeated. Well, and, and I want to remain that way. I'm not going to play anybody else. But uh, chess to me is boring, and if you love chess, please don't be upset and, and slash my tires or anything like that. But it's just one of those games where uh, I, I just don't, I, 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 I'm not into strategy like that. Uh, I want to just throw the tump, uh, dump the thing over and get out of there. Let's just finish this thing. I'm way too, too, too ADDHD. I'm high definition attention deficit disorder. Okay, y'all catch up with me here in a moment. But uh, players strategize in advance. They, you have to know what's going on next. And I, I understood all that. I, I got it. But I just I wasn't the one to take time to think it out. But uh, it's not comfortable if you are on the losing side. You're backed into a corner with nowhere to go. And the, uh, the opponent lays your king over and says, checkmate. Uh, it's just not that fun. Uh, so I, I want to preach to you today that uh, the king always has another move. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter number 1, the Bible says, uh, Come, let us deal wisely, talking about Pharaoh. Lest they multiply, come to pass when there falleth out any war. They join with our enemies and fight against us, so we get them up out of the land. So they thought that if we can just get them out of here, they're not going to be a problem to us. If we can just move them on and, and uh, get them out of our hair, then they will not 
not be a threat, but you see, the king always has another move. Hallelujah. And Exodus chapter 2, verse 24, and God heard their groanings. The, the children of Israel began to cry out. They began to uh, lament. They began to uh, uh, just be totally in despair. And the Bible says God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and had respect unto them. Ladies and gentlemen, until we begin to cry out, then God is not going to hear our prayer. As long as everything is in uh, uh, just in uh, uh, comfort mode and, and let's just coast along, then we're not going to get anywhere in God. Hallelujah. You see, but the Bible says that he uh, remembered his covenant. He did not remember like we would put a, a string around our finger and say, well, I'm going to the store and if I tie a string around my finger, but uh, if you're like me, you would get there and say, what did I put the string on there for? Uh, people have written on their hand, and uh, I, 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 I can hardly read my own handwriting, and uh, that's the reason I have to type stuff out. I, I'm just too ADD. I'm too much of in a hurry. But you see, how does one describe a God that is invisible, immutable, in, uh, everlasting, eternal, all-wise, and all-knowing, when all we have to describe Him is a language, and, and we're reduced to metaphors and similes and weak comparisons, because God said, my ways are high above your ways and my thoughts are above your thoughts and it's impossible to comprehend him because he is the God of heaven who stepped out on the balcony of time and said let there be light but you see God always has another move we're not going to catch him on a bad day we're not going to catch him uh, just off uh, just off kelter a little bit God knows what he's doing hallelujah come on help me here just a little bit this morning the Bible says that God remembered his covenant. It, what, I, I studied that out quite a bit. And, and what it was, God did not have a memory lapse. He did not say, oh, I forgot about them. But there was an appointed time. There was a, a time that God has. There was a destiny that he said, now is the time. You see, if you take a cake out of the oven, here I am talking about Thanksgiving, but if you take something out of the oven before it's time, it's not going to be right. If you leave it in there a little longer, it's not going to be right. But God said, now is the time. I've come to tell some people in Moreau, Louisiana today, now is the time for a shift to happen in the Holy Ghost. Now is a time for a shift to happen in your life. I believe that God is going to do what he said he will do. Hallelujah tonight. Today I'm here to declare that God is going to pull you out of your situation because only God knows how to get out of you what he has put inside of you. Now we can say, well, I'll save that for a better day. I'll wait till things are better. But I don't believe that we're in that place today. He's put visions and dreams. Come on, I feel a feel Holy Ghost in this place right now. God has put visions and dreams inside of people in this building. And, and uh, you've been kind of waiting. Well, God, just give me some time. And, and God, let me get this right. And God, let me get married. And let me have children. You see, God is saying, now is the time. I am going to pull out of you what I have put inside of you because when God puts it in you there's nobody can do anything come on the gates of hell shall not prevail against us when God has got something inside of us hallelujah the, the, the enemy of our soul is not a creator. He is an imitator. He's a fake. He's a fraud. He's a phony and the more you grow in God the more devils new levels hello I made that statement to one time to a dear friend of mine, and he said, I said, new levels, new devils. And he said, no, new levels, more angels. Well, I, I believe that we have the angels of the Lord in camp of the roundabout them that fear him. I, I believe that. But I believe that more levels that we go in God, the enemy's going to come against us. Ladies and gentlemen, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I refuse. Oh, y'all fix to make me preach up in here. Listen, I'm telling somebody, the king always has another move. I don't care what has happened in your life or it matters not what happened in your life. The enemy can not only do so much, the enemy can only only take what you give to him. Hallelujah. I, I was in uh, San Antonio a couple of years ago. The church I walked into, they, uh, when I walk in the door, they usher me into this private office. And uh, certainly uh, nothing like here today, but uh, always welcoming and kind. And, but they took me into this room and placed me there by myself. Just me alone. I don't like being alone. Hello. 
I'm, my personality is I want to I want to hug people. I want to you know shake hands with people. I, I just being alone time that just does not work for well for me. And and so they put me in this room and said stay here until church starts. Now, the devil is a lie. No, I t- went so they they said they closed the door behind them. So I started hearing the music play, and I opened the door and walked out, and all of a sudden they turned around and looked at me. What are you doing in here? I'm not sitting in here while y'all are out worshiping out here. Come on, I may not be able to jump, but I can sure jig my leg a little bit. I can still tap my foot and my toe. I, I mean, I, I ain't got much rhythm, but I, I can sure try to sway back and forth. <laughs> so uh, service when service was over, they, somebody grabbed my Bible and said, follow me, took me back in that room again and closed the door. <laughs> What's the deal? You know, don't y'all like me or something? I mean, y'all trying to uh, uh, just get the, keep me by myself. And so, knock on the door. The pastor walked in and he said, uh, "Brother Marshall, there's a man that'd like to see you. Uh, can he come in?" I said, "Sure, be glad to have anybody." And uh, so he walks in. He sits down. He said, "Brother Marshall, the devil stole my memory." I said, "No, he didn't." The pastor looked at me. The guy looked at me. His eyes got this big. I said, "The devil didn't steal anything." I said, "You gave it to him." Hello? Whenever we give something up, it's not that the devil steals anything. It's that I give it to him. I I say, well, I'm just going to, I've come to tell some people in this place today, there comes a point in your life where you have to stand up and square your shoulders and say, I'm not taking another inch. I am not, devil, you cannot have anything from me. I'm not giving anything up. I'm Come on, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. I've come to tell somebody, revival is happening in Monroe. Revival is happening. Come on, be, be afraid of the seats that are in empty around you because there's going to become alcoholics coming here and I'm, I'm preaching in the Holy Ghost right now there's going to be alcoholics sitting in these seats there's going to be drug addicts there's going to be prostitutes yeah there are those here in Monroe Louisiana there's going to be all type of sinner that walks in here that turn their lives around uh, because the king always has another move the king always knows what he's doing uh, I'm telling somebody in this place today that whatever's going on in your life God knows what he's doing. Hallelujah. They began to cry. They began to groan. God, why are you going through this? Ladies and gentlemen, God has to take you through to get you to. Come on, they had to go through the Red Sea to get to the other side. They had to, they had to go through the wilderness to get to the promised land. They had to go through so they could get to. Brother Marshall, why am I having to go through these problems? Sometimes it's to get something out of me, but sometimes it's to put something inside of me. I'm telling you in this building today, God knows what he's doing. God understands what he's doing. But I've got to learn how to trust him and say, God, in the middle of the fire, I'm still going to praise you. In the middle of my situation, I'm still going to praise you. In the middle of everything going on, God, I'm still going to praise you. Why? Because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and his righteousness. Come on, I want somebody to hear me in this place today. God is getting good good at getting people out of trouble. Blind Bartimaeus, where, what's going on? Well, I, I'm just sitting over here. I, Jesus, have mercy upon me. The ten lepers, God knows how to get them out of their problem. The demon possessed, God knows how to get them out of their problem. Let me tell you what happened in Houston, Texas this past summer. I was preaching about the name of Jesus. And I, was, uh, I walked down off of the platform about right here and... And uh, I saw a man with a beard and mustache and, and hair all scraggly. If John the Baptist were alive today, that's what John the Baptist would have looked like. Except the man was on his knees and, and uh, he was holding a, a, the hand of a young man who, which turned out to be his son. The man, I thought he was on his knees and they walked all the way down to the front. And by the time he got down there, he was crying, he was sobbing, tears streaming down his face. And he tried to hand me something. I, I wasn't going to take just somebody coming up and handing me something. I, I don't look that smart, but I'm a little smarter than that, you know. And he said, I want this Jesus you're preaching about right now. And, and he handed this to me. He's crying uncontrollably. And I said, what is that? He said, this is my Satan worship ring. He said, I worshiped Satan for 40 years. He said, I, 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 I've got to have this Jesus you're talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, within just a few seconds, God filled the man with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We baptized him in Jesus' name. I took that little box that that ring was in. 
I began to stomp on it. They went and got me a sledgehammer, and we, sl- we absolutely flattened that ring out. Why? Because he said, I've been worshiping the Satan for 40 years. I want this Jesus. Why? Because the king always has another move. I I want somebody to help me right now. The king always has another move. I've got to convince some people in this place that that the, the, the king does have another move. Come on, whatever's going on in your life, he knows where you're at. He knows exactly what's going on. There has never been a time... Pastor said it a few moments ago that, that if God hasn't blessed you, when I started evangelizing I uh, 16 years ago, 17 years ago, whatever it was, I, I went to I was preaching for a friend of mine and he said, "Are you going to evangelize?" I said, "Yeah, I guess I am." And, and I, I said, "But I'm so afraid." It was uh, Brother Marty Ballester, I'm sure you know him. And he, he looked at me and he said, uh, "Brother Tim, he said, "If God fails you, he said, "You let me know, please." He said, I'll, I'll build you a monument bigger than the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. He said, I'll build you a monument. He said, I'll put it anywhere in the states you want it to be. be. I said, why is that? He said, because if God fails you, you will be the first person that God has ever failed. Guess what? You can tell God has not failed me. I'm not going to even put yet on there because it leaves open an opportunity and a possibility. God has never failed me. And I've come to tell you, Monroe, Louisiana, Christian Life Church, God has never failed you, and God will never fail me. But all God does is he moves. God moves us in a position where he says, now is the time for me to give you greater. Now is the time for me to give you something. Now is the time for me to open a door that you thought was closed. I'm coming to tell somebody in this place that God knows who you are, and he knows all about you. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. There's miracles in this building right now. There's healing in this building right now. The Holy Ghost is in this building right now. The king always has another move. Here's the issue. We think that God, I've got, I'm I'm to the end of my rope. Had a dream a number of years ago. I said, God, I'm at the end of my road with a D. I saw a sign. It was a, the, the, the road was closed. And I saw the Lord standing there. He said, I'll be the extension you need. Now, I know that may not be earth-shaking to many people, but it was earth-shaking to me at that point. God, in other words, I've done all that I can do. I've done everything I know how to do. And he says, let me do the other part. Uh, uh, Let me do the other part. Let me be what, what you cannot be. When the Lord touched my wife and healed my wife of, of breast cancer, uh, I, from that point on, I've never said my wife had that cancer. I'm saying the doctor said that. Let the doctors do what the doctors do. And let's let God be God in the middle of my trouble, in the middle of my trial, in the middle of where it seems like my family is falling apart. Let God step in and say, I'm going to be the counselor. He's wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. He's never failed me. He's not walked away from me. He knows my name. God knows who you are sometimes I've looked back and I've had the Lord speak to me so many times and strongly say I know who you are I know where you're at I know all about you God do you really know who I am yes I know your name is Tim Marshall yes I know all about you God knows exactly who you are and he knows everything about your lives our problem is is we forget pastor we forget that God really knows who I am. God, why am I going through what I'm going through? Because I'm taking you up to a place. You've asked, God, I want to go to a higher level. God, I want more out of you. And in that, sis, I, I don't know everything about you. Pastor told me that you came in just recently. I, I come here once a year. I'm asking him, I I'm, I'm keep paying him, I'm sending him some money to let me come more than once a year. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Let me tell you what I feel in the Holy Ghost. You have been through some things that is absolutely would waylay most people. You could have thrown your hands in the air and said, I quit. You've had things turn against you. You've had some successes, but you've had some things that turned against you. And you're saying, why am I where I'm at right now? I need something. 
I could be crazy, but I think I'm right on the money this morning. But God is saying, I have had to bring you through that to get you to right where you are right now. Would you stand? God's fixing to turn some things around for you. Lift your hands to heaven by the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name Jesus. I release it right now. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you, God, right now. I thank you for it, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice. Would you lift your voice to God right now? Would you lift your voice, everybody? Hallelujah. God, I thank you. I thank you that you have not forgotten us, that you know who we are, you know where we're at. Yes. 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 Bishop, I, I was, I, I promise not to keep you all, all afternoon, but I just, I know what I feel in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Brother Toby, keep playing. It calms me down a little bit. I moved to California. I was pastoring in Indiana moved to California. I just built a brand new building in Indiana. State-of-the-art sound system. Beautiful building. Sits right on the four-way stop. Know it was the will of God because it was across the street from Walmart. And uh, the Lord said, okay, it's time for you to go. I want to go. Didn't want to go. Didn't ask to go. In fact, I had prayed three months about it. Shouldn't have to pray three months about anything. But I did. Because I didn't want to go. I talked to my elders. This is the Lord. I get out there and it's the worst thing that I have ever been through in my life. I'd sit down to the keyboard, couldn't play a thing, couldn't sing a thing. Nothing was going on, nothing was happening. Okay, God, what are you trying to do? People turned against me. Had a man in a that was in the church was a police officer. My last night there in that city, I was afraid. I, I was awake all night long jerking, expecting the man to come in and arrest me for no reason at all. That's how evil it was. I went to Mark Morgan's house, stayed with him for five weeks, my wife and daughter. We were not separated. Nothing going on, just... I had to get them out of there, and I had to get my head on straight because I didn't know what God was doing. I, five weeks, he would wake me up every morning, would wake up in the morning and have prayer. And then he took me to his, uh, they were building a studio for uh, production stuff. We would build a wall. I didn't want to build a wall. I wanted to lay in bed with my head covered in a dark room. Have y'all ever been there? Am, am I totally off my rocker today? I, I, 
every day. We'd stay there literally till about one o'clock in the morning. At lunch, he'd hand me twenty dollars and he'd say, "Go get us a snack. Go to that little taqueria down there. Tacos were twenty five fifty cents. I bought twenty dollars worth of food." In five weeks, I gained 35 pounds. Dear Lord, he's trying to kill me. Couldn't understand why. Every day, every day, every day, for five weeks, I didn't get to preach one time. Finally, after about five weeks, he said, I got you a place to preach. Go, go preach for Chad this Sunday. Chad King, he said, uh, Go up there, it's, it's their All Nation Sunday. I get there and Chad said, you've got about 13 minutes to preach. Can you do that? Hello. I hadn't preached in five weeks. That's dangerous, but yeah, I got you. So I didn't build it up. I didn't give an introduction. I didn't do all that stuff. I just hit it. We had about 18, 19 people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I thought, well, thank you, Jesus. I'm back. Nothing. I called a friend of mine who was pastoring close by. I did not know that he lived there. I had been there for a year. It was my mom and dad's friend. He said, Brother Marshall, why don't you come preach for us Wednesday night? I said, okay. I get there and I preach on Wednesday night. I walk up to start singing. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy. Man, the place started worshiping people on their feet. They started running to the altar, literally running to the altar. The song ends. I didn't know what to do. I said, roll it again. I sang the same song again. Several people got the Holy Ghost. Pastor said, uh, Brother Marshall, I think we need to start revival with you. How many think we should start revival? 250, 300 people. Yeah, let's start revival. I get back there on Sunday afternoon, and I walk up to the platform and I see a lady sitting over here with red hair. And I said, sis, um, would you please stand? I said, the enemy has told you that it's your fault. And when I said that, it, the whole oxygen was sucked out of the room. <gasps> and I said, it is not your fault. Don't blame yourself any longer. You had no choice. And I just told her what the Lord spoke to me. And nine times out of ten, I'm not going to remember you know, that's just stuck in my brain. I said, would you step out of the aisle? And by that time, people are, people are just absolutely spastic. And uh, she came to the front, and I said, ma'am, would you up here on the platform? She had black hair. I said, would you come sit down here, stand down here beside this lady? I said, there's a Jonathan David spirit going on. And uh, I said, I don't know. I said, I'm sure y'all are friends somewhere. She looked at me, and she said, this is my twin sister. I went, well, there you are. Come to find out that that lady had, her husband had left her, had decided a different lifestyle. And uh, she had blamed herself for it. I said all that to say this, not to build me up or anything like that, but God knows who we are. And Bishop, had I not gone through what I went through, then I wouldn't be able to move in the realm and where I'm at right now. I know I told you the downsides of, of traveling and everything that I've, I've been, I mean, since, since June this year, my body is just, I told the lady at the airport yesterday what, where I've been, what she looked at me, she said, sir, you need to slow down. She said, in 22 years, I have never heard, in 22 years at the airline, she said, I've never heard what you just told me. She said, do you realize your body is not designed for that? you think? I didn't say that, but I said, thank you, ma'am. My wife says the same thing. But had I not gone through what I went through several years ago, I would not be where I'm at right now. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I've got everything right. I'm not saying that I'm, but Sister Bethany, I look back now and I say, God, thank you for allowing me to go through that because that has brought me to where I'm at today. I, I, I'm preaching to a whole lot of people in this building. 
that you don't know why you've had to go through what you've gone through. But the king always has another move. Always. You're not going to catch him at that last moment where he says, oops, I forgot about you. No, that's not the way God works. Whatever your dreams, whatever your ambitions, whatever your goals are, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. I'm telling you, God is here this morning, and he knows who you are, and he's trying to get across to some people in this place. Square your shoulders up, lift your chin up, and say, God, if I went through that, I had the pastor that I went to, Brother Eugene Rushing. He told me, he said, you need to go to God and pray. God, if you're going to give me the trials of Job, then you better give me the blessings of Job. I said, that preaches really well, doesn't it? God's not obligated to do anything. But if I'll trust in him and I'll have confidence in him and seek first the kingdom of God, then he's going to add these other things. It's not because of what I've done. It's not because of anything special about me. Hey, am I making sense at all this morning? Uh, I, I just woke up this, with this in my spirit today. But Marshall, I'm, I'm just at the end of my road. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at the end of it. I don't know where to go. Uh, well, let me help you out just a little bit. Uh, Moses stuttered, and God still used him. David had an affair and killed a man. But God still used him. Hello. Timothy had an ulcer, and God still used him. I could go on. I, I, Peter was a liar. He, he, he cussed. He, th these men are not men that are, God does not call the equipped. He equips the called. And so we have to say, okay, God, you have called me now. Equip me to have, go through this. Um, come on, would you lift your hands one more time? I, I believe the Holy Ghost is still, the Holy Ghost is still doing something in this place today. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, go ahead. Come on, would you lift your hands to heaven? Everybody in this place, lift your hands. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have been through the fire or if you're in the fire, you need to thank God that you're in the middle of the fire. Because if you're in the fire, that means you're not alone. The king's mighty men fell dead at the doorstep. He said, turn it up seven times hotter. They fell dead at the doorstep. But the three Hebrew children, those men, walked in. Uh, didn't we throw three in there? Yeah. And why do I seek for it? There was a revelation that was happening. If you were in the fire, you need to thank God that you didn't die at the doorstep. There are people, I could go around this room. There's so many people in this place that your spirits have just been discombobulated. But today, today is going to be an epic day. I'm 
telling you in the Holy Ghost, today is going to be an epic day. There's going to be a shift. There's going to be a shift. We've got to let our, our spirits settle and say, okay, God, you've got a purpose. I don't understand it. When I left California, that old gospel song, leaving on my mind, was what kept running through my mind. Just, I got leaving on my mind. I'm, I'm out of here. Hit the road, Jack, is another one that kept going through my mind. I could say some more, but I'm not. I, I, I just as, but I look back at it now, and I thank God that I went through that because it strengthened my faith. It it caused my faith to rise. I've I've got greater faith now than I have ever have in my life. Because I know that if God took me through that, He can take me through whatever life may throw my direction. I know it's a little slower than I'm, I normally do on a Sunday morning, but I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, there's going to be a shift in the atmosphere this day, this day. Would you lift your hands to heaven one more time as they sing? Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Would you stand with me? There's something happening in the Holy Ghost in this place right now. I'm not in a hurry. I'm just going to let God do what He does. Above. Touch your body, touch your mind, whatever situation comes. I, I promise you I could spend the next two hours going and, and touching people on the shoulder, but would you come quickly? Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Doesn't mean that we have sin. Doesn't mean that we've got a lot of problems in our life. It just means, God, I need a breakthrough. If you need a breakthrough, let's put it that way. If you want a breakthrough in your life, come quickly. Come on. Come on, Jesus. I praise you. And in fathomless pillows Yes. Peace, peace. Come on, just a few more moments. Just a few more moments. God. Right now. 